In this video, we are going to take a look at some simple corridor editing and then the corridor surfaces. Now, we learned how to go through corridor properties to change some of our parameters and information. We can also do that quickly through the right click menu. So we can go modify regions. We can edit the targets. What do we want to target? I want to change this region. Okay, target existing ground. It's a little more user friendly because you can actually see what's happening. If I go split region, Civil 3D asks me select a region to split. Okay, I want to split this entire corridor and I want to split it, say, here. Say my road cross section is changing at this location. And Civil 3D will go through and rebuild the corridor. However, it will apply a split there that we can then go and change the definition either to the south or north. So we see we have some markers here now. And if I go into corridor properties, we have these two plus an additional one there. Another thing with corridors, if we click on the pieces, the pieces that they're being applied to will highlight themselves. So modify region, we can add regions, we can edit the frequency, merge regions, copy regions, delete regions, isolate, hide. We can modify sections, edit the corridor style. So now that we have our corridor built, we need to be able to view the surface from it. We need to be able to create a surface that we can then compare to our existing ground to derive volumes. So I'm going to go back to the prospector tab and we can select our corridor and go into properties. You could also select your corridor, right click, corridor surfaces. However, this doesn't give us, or no, it does give us all the options. So either way is fine. They're both the same corridor properties. I'm going to go under the surfaces tab. Now, there's a few different kinds of surfaces we can make. We can make it out of the links of the corridor or based on feature lines in the corridor itself. Feature lines, you need to know exactly what you're adding into your surface. Otherwise, you're going to end up picking the bottom of your pavement or the top of your paved shoulder. So I tend to stay with links because links are probably easier to figure out. So I'm going to make a new surface and I'm going to call this my base surface. This will be the very bottom of our road. This is what we're going to be comparing our volumes to. We don't want to compare it to the top of the road because that is going to give us the wrong information. I'm going to choose a style that's not going to be crazy. We'll just do five and one. And now we've added the surface in. However, we need to specify a code. So when I'm specifying a code, this will be at the top of my base. I want datum. I want the very bottom. I'm going to click the plus. We only ever want one code underneath of one surface. I am going to create another surface called my finalized road top surface. And we can choose five and one as well. It's going to give us a couple surfaces, but that's fine. We're going to choose the top. And then if you want to know how much asphalt you're going to need, we can create a bottom of pavement surface. So you can make really as many surfaces as you want. Bottom of asphalt. And as long as all your numbers are set up fine in your assembly, this will give you the right information. I believe we want to use the pave two surface for this one or the PAVE2 code. So I'm going to hit OK and rebuild my corridor and it's going to go through and create these surfaces for me. So if I look under surfaces, we now have a base surface, a bottom of asphalt, and a finalized road top. So I'm going to select one of these, the bottom of asphalt, and take a quick look at the object viewer. So as we see, oh, Kyle didn't connect his corridor to the or his uh, alignment to the very end there, and we're dropping down to zero. But it's also pixelated, it's tessellated inside of the curves itself. So I'm going to take a look at my alignment quickly and zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And I have not touched the end of my profile. So if you're building a corridor on your entire profile, it needs to extend to the very end.
and I want to snap to, we'll just snap it to the nearest over here and we'll let Civil 3D rebuild itself. So again, that was fractions, probably that was a millimeter or two that I moved it. However, it dropped the corridor right down to zero elevation. So if I select that again in Object Viewer, has that cleaned itself up yet? Yes, it has. So just a simple little fix like that will impact your volumes dramatically. And that was just a simple little mistake that we never realized we made. Also, if we notice our corridor is out of date, so right click rebuild, it'll rebuild the corridor just to make sure that that final piece has been updated. And then I can show you how to create a boundary on these surfaces. So we don't want to include these volumes in our surface. I'm going to run the command report surface volume just to show you how much this actually changes. I'm going to select the existing ground as my base and then we'll select my base surface for the comparison. This is going to go through and give me a volume based on what we see here. So I have 5,167,000 cubic meters of cut, 8,953,000 cubic meters of fill. Let's go add the boundary and, conf and run those volumes again. So I'm going back into quarter properties. I'm going to hit the boundaries tab. I'm going to right click on my surface and we have a few different options here. We have add automatically, add interactively from a polygon. Most times corridor extends as, as outer boundary will do just fine for what we need. If you start having intersections and very detailed subdivision corridors, the boundary option will not work. So I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to rebuild my surface now and all these extra contours should go away. It's now shrunk it to the edges of my corridor. So if I create another data entry, I'll go existing ground city of Calgary, base surface, and let that finish calculating. We have 4.6 million cubic meters, or sorry, 466,000 cubic meters of cut. So it went from 5.1 million down to 467,000. And it went from 8.9 million meter, cubic meters of fill to 1.2 million cubic meters of fill. So that lowered our volumes substantially by simply adding a boundary to our corridor. So that was just a quick run through of how to edit a corridor and how to generate corridor surfaces.